Today we're talking all about contraception and answering your top questions. Hey friends, today we're taking a deeper look at all your contraception options. With so much misinformation out there, I want to make sure we are breaking down the facts and giving you the information you need to know. A huge thanks to Plan B One Step Emergency Contraception for sponsoring this episode. Plan B is committed to increasing education and access to emergency contraception and improving women's sexual health. I'm proud to partner with them for this episode and bring medical facts straight to you. So let's dive in. What are the chances of hormonal IUDs creating severe acne? The hormonal IUDs are all progesterone based. The constant daily progesterone makes all hormonal IUDs a very effective means of contraception, but it does sometimes have side effects. Common side effects from any progesterone only continuous method include hair loss, acne, and weight gain. But in a large study of 2,147 women, the increase in acne with a hormonal IUD was significant as compared to those who used oral contraceptive pills or the vaginal ring. So something to be aware of. All right, number two, it's going around that it's bad to take EC, emergency contraception, for more than one time a year. Is this true? I get asked this question all the time, and I don't know why this misinformation is spreading. The answer is no. There is not a limit to how many times you can take emergency contraception like the Plan B one-step pill. Plan B is there to decrease your risk of pregnancy when you need it. Side note, if you're needing emergency contraception multiple times per year, then it may be worth talking to your healthcare provider about a regular birth control method that works for you. Plan B is a single dose of progesterone in a one-time pill that works by preventing ovulation. You can take it at any time of your cycle when you have unprotected sex to decrease your chance of pregnancy. Plan B must be taken within 72 hours of unprotected sex or birth control failure, and the sooner it's taken, the better it works. Although multiple uses may cause irregular bleeding due to the progesterone exposure, this is not harmful. It won't impact your future fertility or make further Plan B use less effective. You can buy Plan B right off the shelf in any state without a prescription, ID, or age requirement, and at most major retailers in the U.S. And remember to always read the label. Also, could you make a video explaining how the morning after pill works? I hear so many people trying to claim it's an abortion. Eye roll emoji. Honestly, I get asked about emergency contraception all the time. And so I think it is super important and you deserve to know your options on how to prevent a pregnancy the most. Plan B will not work if you're pregnant. So for everybody who's asking me, can I take plan B after I'm pregnant? No, plan B will not work after you're pregnant. It is not an abortion pill. It is a form of emergency contraception, meaning it helps to prevent a pregnancy before it starts. Plan B is a single dose of levonorgestrel. It works by temporarily preventing or delaying ovulation. Plan B does not prevent implantation of an already fertilized egg. However, there are abortion pills that exist. These are called mesoprostol and mifeprestone, and they work by ending a very early pregnancy. They are only available by a prescription and under the care of a doctor. These medications work differently from each other and differently than Plan B, which again, does not impact an existing pregnancy. The most effective non-permanent contraception, intrauterine devices, are by far the most effective non-permanent contraception, hands down. There are two main types of IUD, a hormonal, which releases different types and amounts of progesterone, and a non-hormonal, which is copper-based. Both of these IUDs have over a 99% prevention of pregnancy rate. Can the pill cause decrease in libido, dryness, and moodiness? The important thing to remember about the majority of birth control pills is that they contain the two different compounds. So again, the estrogen in pills is very similar, all different doses of ethanol estradiol, but the progestin is different. And there's so many different types of birth control pills that have different types of progestins. Each pill will have its own unique side effects in any unique person. So what one person loves, another person may not. Common side effects that women are concerned about include weight gain and mood changes. Weight gain has not been associated with the pill in numerous studies, even the different types, not associated. Depression, has been associated with the pill use, with up to a 10% increase in depression diagnosis. However, this is usually tied to the type of progestin and the individual woman. So you can talk to your doctor and try changing this up. You could try changing the brand or the type of combination pill if you're noticing a mood issue. When it comes to libido specifically, this is interesting. So a review of 36 different studies conducted between 1978 and 2011, took all the studies together and analyzed the results to have more power, more numbers, showed that only 15% of women who were on the pill had lower libido. Interestingly, 22% who were on the pill had no change and 62% actually had an increase in their sex drive after going on the pill. Maybe that protection is liberating. Should we take breaks from the pill? 
I've been on it for 10 years. Does that impact my fertility? You do not need to take breaks from the pill. So when somebody says, I'm using the pill, are you on the pill? They're referring to combination birth control pills. Combination pills are a combination, ethanol estradiol, type of estrogen, and any type of progestin. Long-term use of the combined birth control pill does not impact future fertility. Not, even with constant use. This was a concern in really old studies that used a higher dose estrogen content. But due to this concern, many good follow-up studies have been done and they've answered this question for us. Even if you use the pill continuously, meaning you do not take the placebo pills or take breaks so you don't have periods, you are not impacting your future fertility. In fact, I have an entire video on this. You can click the link in the description. That being said, a couple things to remember. Number one, the pill is giving your body hormones. So you may have an underlying ovulation disorder and not know. So I recommend stopping the pill about three months before you're ready to get pregnant so you can see what your periods do. And remember to use other forms of birth control for protection. If your periods are irregular after three months, see an OBGYN. Number two, also prolonged continuous use may result in a thin endometrial lining. This is from constant progesterone exposure. Same thing here, stop your pill about three months before you're ready to conceive, and if you don't have a period, come back, go see an OBGYN. Does the pill mask symptoms of perimenopause or menopause? Thanks for everything you share. Thank you for listening or watching. Okay, because the birth control pills contain a version of the hormone estrogen, it prevents the brain from sending out FSH, which is follicle stimulating hormone. Therefore, you don't ovulate and you don't get pregnant, so that's how the pill works. The progesterone in the pill protects the lining of the endometrium. It also allows you to get a period at a defined interval by stopping the pill. So when you go into those placebo pills or you stop taking it, you get a period. Since the brain is not sending out any FSH, you don't really know what's going on. So yes, when you take a birth control pill, you're giving your body hormones, which can mask symptoms. When you stop the pill, the truth will be revealed. I've had a patient who was young, only 26, stop the birth control pill to try to get pregnant and her periods never came back and she was in premature menopause. There are a variety of reasons why your periods may not return. However, this is not the norm with the combined birth control pill. The take home message is that your period should return immediately among stopping the birth control pill. If it does not return or it's still irregular after three months of stopping the pill, you should go see a doctor. Can an IUD lead to infertility of complications arise? Well, this is a good one. Any procedure where you insert an instrument into the uterus has risk. One risk is uterine perforation, which means poking a hole through the top of the uterus. This is not common. The incidence is one out of a thousand IUDs placed in the uterus and typically perforation heals with no further issues. However, sometimes the perforation can lead to significant bleeding or concern for damage, whatever was on the outside of the uterus. And so this may require a laparoscopy where you put a camera through the belly button to look inside the abdomen to go and diagnose what's going on. The biggest risk for fertility here is that scar tissue could develop, which could make it harder for a woman to get pregnant later on. Concern for uterine perforation usually happens at the time of insertion, especially with extreme pain or having the IUD strings not seen on follow-up exam. So many OBGYNs verify the position of the IUD by either doing an ultrasound at the time of placement or by bringing you back in to check the strings by putting a speculum in the vagina, looking at the cervix and seeing the strings hanging out to confirm proper position. When a perforation happens and scar tissue does form inside the uterus, it is called Asherman syndrome, which is associated with having no periods or amenorrhea. So if you have your IUD removed and you get your periods back, you're okay. But if your IUD is removed and you do not get your periods back, please see your OBGYN or fertility specialist. If there is scar tissue, we can then talk you through and proceed with surgical removal and treatment as indicated. Okay, so these were some of your top questions about contraception. Again, I wanna thank Plan B One Step Emergency Contraception for sponsoring this episode and for being a huge supporter of women. Know that if you find yourself in the position of needing an emergency contraceptive, Plan B is always an option. And always talk to your doctor about any questions you have. Thank you so much, and feel free to ask any questions that you have in the chat or the suggestions for topics for future Q&A videos. Subscribe to the channel if you can because this helps spread more fertility and body empowerment knowledge to more people. You can follow me on Instagram at Natalie Crawford MD. And as always, you can listen to the As Woman podcast to get more information on in depth fertility related topics. To learn more about Plan B, visit www.planb1step.com for information on the product and where to access it. Thanks, friends. Mm -hmm.